We saw hundreds and hundreds of deputies and law enforcement agents from across Metro Detroit and the state of Michigan descend on the campus of MSU uh, just less than 24 hours ago after that terrible shooting at MSU. One of the caravans was coming right from Oakland County and the sheriff of Oakland County, Mike Bouchard, joins us now to talk a little bit about some perspective when it comes to how to move forward from this. Look, there's going to be a lot of politicalization about gun control and um, gun rights advocates and those who uh, believe that these guns should be out of the hands of bad guys. When it comes to getting dangerous people off these campuses in a place where they don't and can't do this kind of harm, how do you begin that process? Well, I mean, there's a number of things. And, and lots of times after a tragedy, you see people run to their respective corners. But there's a lot in the middle that I think we can and should do right away. Um, we've talked about this before. I'm head of government affairs for major county sheriffs of America. Um, there's a, millions, literally millions of people that are currently prohibited by convictions and other things from purchasing a weapon, but they haven't been entered into the background system. So when they go in and try to buy a weapon, they're not told no. They're not told they're not allowed to, even though legally they are not allowed to. It hadn't been updated. So that's a quick fix. Fix that system. Get that entered real time across the country. Get those millions of people that already are illegal so that they can't purchase. Second, when you have these background checks, we know that only about 3% of those that attempt to purchase a weapon that are prohibited ever get prosecuted. Mm. So if you've got 97% of the people going in going, hey, it's illegal for you to try to buy sure. and not doing anything about it, well, they're not done. They either go down to another store that doesn't check them or they go out to the street to buy it. They need to be prosecuted. We need to have consequences and we need the system to be fixed and work. I think everybody either side could buy into those kinds of things and do it quickly. It's only been a few hours since, of course, we've learned the name of the suspect. I'm sure you've learned a little bit about this person. Um, in, the, in this particular case, if that could not have been prevented to get the weapon out of his hand for whatever reason, um, what can be done on college campuses like U of M and Central and Michigan State to try to help secure these buildings a little bit more? Well, everything's a balance, right, in a free society. I've done homeland security trips to Colombia, to Israel, to examine how do they deal with active shooters or terrorist threats, and it's a balance. Like in Israel, they have concentric circles. You have to go through more and more and more security before you get where all the people are. Mm. America is not ready for that. They don't want to get wanted every time you go into every building, regardless of what it is. So we have to find processes that I think that people are comfortable with in terms of balancing security and oppressive nature of the kind of security rings and the wanding and the metal detectors everywhere. I don't think America is ready for that, but there's a lot of things we can and I think should do. But like this guy was not an MSU student, a 43 year old man who just shows up on mm -hmm. campus with a gun, uh, is able to get through certain doors of the union building and exit and escape. Um, when you look at that, these IDs are not wanding. It's not so intrusive. It's just, hey, you can't get in the building unless you're a student. Right, and, and that goes to obviously a discussion that they'll have because they've got a lot of open buildings like the, you know, I'm a student from Michigan State as you are. Yeah. A lot of open buildings where you don't have to swipe in. You don't like at residence halls, you, everybody can't get in. But at the union and other things, they're open to the public. They're, you know, where parents or other people can go have a cup of coffee, hang out. They might have the, some of those discussions going forward do we need to change our protocols? But again, that's gonna change the feel of the campus and it's all a balancing. We only have about 20 seconds left, but if you could leave people with uh, some words of wisdom as to how to cope with this, how to deal with this, um, how do you even begin that process? Don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, it takes strength to ask for help. A tragedy like this hits you on so many levels, anxiety, depression, fear, violation, the lack of feeling safe. Ask for help, get help. It helps you process the unimaginable, and you need to do that. Please, if you're struggling in any way, shape, or form, get help, ask for help. Ask your friends and neighbors, people yeah. that have kids. Don't be afraid to touch people and say, I got you, how can I help? Sure. You know, that simple yeah. touch, when I was there last night, you could see kids just wanting mm. Some reassurance. Melting I, into that. Yeah. And I hugged a couple of them and you could see them just kind of relax. We got to be there for each other and try to exercise kindness in the face of tragedy. Uh, Mike Bouchard, the Sheriff of Oakland County, good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Anytime.